Hey, all right, folks. Uh, welcome to SF Combo Co. SF Company Hour number 114. 114. Welcome to the show. Uh, Mr. Everett's uh, jumping on a phone, I think, in a second. Just send him a link. Uh, yeah, we're going to have a fun show. Uh, a lot, uh, some stuff to talk about. Should be a good one. All right, folks, uh, here we're live here at this SF Combo Company channel, SF, uh, SF Company Hour. Start sounding like Lando for a second. Sorry if I'm a little out of it. Uh, last week, uh, some of you guys know I was uh, out with some uh, uh, some uh, lovely uh, Ovid. There he is, Mr. On the Phone. Yeah, you look like Hondo. That's great. Right now, there you go. There he is. Uh, Rick's, uh, yeah, dealing with some computer update issues. So, how you doing, Mr. Effort? Uh, just waiting. <laughs> I'm like, look, I'm like 16%. Goddamn. How'd I miss this one? <laughs> yeah, that's why you turn on your computer earlier, and then we, uh, you know, have it ready to go. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was on hibernate. I thought I was going to just press it. I was like, <laughs> so I was like, wait for updates. I was like, uh -oh. <laughs> Welcome to the channel, folks. If you're new to the channel, please uh, like the video, subscribe, all that crap. Uh, we talk mo movies, comics, TVs, uh, geek stuff, toys, uh, games, yeah, whatever dork stuff we love to talk about. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is our weekly show, this is Company Hour. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Halo TV show. Uh, on Paramount Plus, the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, movie on the, the Netflix, and a bunch of random crap. Uh, so today, uh, we'll, we'll start off with the, the sad news stuff. Uh, we got some sad news uh, this week. Uh, Brian, uh, first, uh, Brian Augustine, uh, uh, he was an editor for uh, DC Comics, and also uh, a, a writer in his own right. Uh, he worked with Mark Wade a lot. Uh, he, for me personally, he did. Uh, he was editor uh, editor uh, on the Flash, uh, Wally West years when Mark Wade was writing, uh, and uh, later in the series, uh, he actually started co-writing uh, uh, the the last arc, one of the last arcs uh, Mark Wade did on uh, on the Flash, the Walter West Dark Flash storyline. Great storyline, great uh, great editor, great writer. Uh, from all accounts, a uh, 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 Awesome dude. Uh, definitely was instrumental in that Wally West, uh, Mark Wade run. So, uh, uh, yeah, Mark Wade uh, is on the right right there. Uh, they kind of look like the, they could be brothers down near. Uh, but, uh, yeah, RIP to uh, Brian Augustine, man. Great uh, great writer. Uh, definitely um, a legend in the Flash uh, mythos. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, RIP to him. Ricky, you, you got caught up with all the Wally West stuff, right? Uh, not all of it. Uh, I, I, it's a big turnoff. I, I just want to have like a couple of good books where he's not a murderer and he's back to being Wally West. This is a long time ago. That's some weird ass incarnation of a different Wally West. The hell are you talking about? Blue. He's back to being Wally West again, right? Yeah. He's, How he's, many trades? Huh? How many trades so far? Uh, the first one hasn't come out yet. Yeah, see, that's what I'm waiting for. No, you're not. Don't lie to me. I'm a trade guy, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I would uh, go back and read some of the older, uh, older uh, Flash uh, stuff. If you haven't, it's some uh, some great superhero work. Uh, I got uh, our friend Matty Ice on it, and uh, he's been loving it. So yeah, definitely go back and read some of those old uh, Wally West Flash. The Mark Wade one is amazing, so definitely go back and read that stuff if you haven't already. Uh, I think you would actually love the Walter West storyline that uh, he co-wrote with uh, Mark Wade. Well, where does that come uh, in the timeline of shit? Is he? That's Kevin right. Before Jer oh my God, Rick! That oh, happened. This is shit that happened back in the day. All right, calm down. Back in the day. That's Are you okay, Rick? <laughs> uh, no, I'm just I'm I'm agitated that I have to be on my phone instead of on the PC. Like you're like a, you're like a Hondo man. Uh, yeah, you're a, you're a Hondo vision. <laughs> right. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> 
fucking hate it, dude. Agitated Rick is my favorite Rick, really. <laughs> so uh, RIP to uh, Mr. Brian Augustine. Uh, another uh, sad loss this week. We lost uh, Brian uh, Brian Hessman. Uh, famously, uh, he was you know uh, WKRP Cincinnati. Uh, he was uh, and of course uh, head of the class. Probably his two two most famous roles. Uh, ba- ba- what he's basically known for. Uh, passed away uh, this week. He was how old? Was he? he was eighty one years old, which is pretty young. You know, you know but still a good run. Uh, he's in poor health since recovering from a colon surgery last summer. He, uh, he died at uh, Cedars Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, this one, you know, this is you know our teacher. Uh, I, I remember originally uh, watching WKRP uh, reruns. Uh, I remember that show first for sure. I remember him; he was hilarious. Um, what was it Johnny Lethal, right? Johnny Fever. Johnny Fever, yeah, Johnny Lethal. Johnny Lethal. Uh, it sounds like a wrestler. Uh, <laughs> Johnny Fever, uh, yeah, on, uh, he was great on that. He was like the head DJ dude on there. He was hilarious on that. And of course, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, head of the class. That's you know probably my favorite role of his. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, he was a. Uh, yeah, he was great on that show. Uh, Charlie, Charlie Moore, uh, just a great uh, these uh, these young smart kids and kind of you know kind of teaching them like shit they don't know and with through life lessons. A uh, great show. I rewatched the recent uh, re uh, rewatched the first three seasons recently. Man, just a great show. Uh, he was really good on it. Uh, he you know showed up in a lot of stuff. Man, he was in you know fucking Fly the Navigator. I remember watching that recently, and I remember I was like, oh yeah, I forgot he was in this. And I uh, did a lot of TV stuff here and there. I remember, yeah, I remember him doing a run on uh, the '70s show, playing a DJ, of course. And uh, yeah, you would just pop up on these, you know, these movies, these little small roles here and there on TV and movies. Didn't really do much in the last few years. A lot of a lot of TV stuff. Uh, but uh, what about you, Mister Afro? What was your, some of your fond memories of uh, Howard Esman? Oh, dude. Well, yeah, Mister Moore on, uh, you know, head of the class, uh, but. It was a trip to see him in uh, Flat of the Navigator because he's he's uh, Doctor Faraday. He's a fucking asshole. Uh, well, kind of, yeah. No, no, he he was he, he was a he was a dick, dude. Uh, keeping a kid against his own fucking will, you know, he fucking little kids. He definitely was scared like the whole time that he was in it. But yeah, I, I like the fact that I liked him in one thing and I hated him in something else. That's like a testament to like a good actor, man. If if I'm hating you in something because of like the role you're playing, yeah, because he did feel like that bureaucratic fucking uh, you know government shady ass uh, scientist. Like, oh yeah, we're gonna keep you here, and oh, we'll take care of you, you know, and all that shit. It's uh, yeah, he's gonna be missed, man. It's just he hasn't. When was the last thing? What was the last thing he did? Uh, it was a it was a small thing. Uh, he, he, yeah, because he, he was like retired from acting too, right? Yeah, it's twenty eight. Well, the last thing he did was Dirty Politics. I don't know what that is. Uh, he did a fre- he did a role of fresh of the uh, fresh off the boat in twenty seventeen. So yeah, he did a lot of TV shows. So he did some um did some TV movies, some uh, like small cameos and some uh, TV movies and TV shorts. So yeah, I, I can't remember the last time I actually saw him. In a thing, yeah. I'm trying to look. Yeah, what on TV stuff? He was in Halloween too. I think the um, yeah, the fucking uh, Rob Zombies uh, movies. Um, the thing I think I remember about him the most, man, because it's so fucking memorable and burned into my head, is the opening sequence from uh, Head of the Class, like him getting to work. Yeah, like all that you know, from waking up to just opening the door, seeing all the kids there. It, it's some of that shit's like iconic, dude. Yeah. Yeah. No, he was great. And, yeah, like I said, the, the, yeah, he left uh, after the fourth season. Uh, the fourth season that show is not really you know, that kind of. It kind of. I'm kind of. It kind of takes me out of it. Uh, but those first three seasons are amazing. He's really good. In it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm rebooting it. So hopefully they'll have like a tribute to him. It'd be cool if they like named the school after him or something. Like the school, the new head of the class uh, reboot. I hope they, like they they oh, do. Yeah. Like it'd be nice if they had like uh, the Mr. Moore Award or something like that. Yeah, or they go to the uh, Charlie Moore Academy or something like that. What the hell is that clicking sound? Huh? 
There's like a clicking sound coming from. Yeah, I can't hear you now. Your sound garbled. Why is it? I'm now we really have technical difficulties on my computer. But... <laughs> I hear a crackle. It might be my phone. Snap, crackle, and pop. Yeah. Uh, so RIP, uh, uh, Teach. Yeah, he's going to be missed for sure. How's your computer doing? 24%. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it goes, yeah, this will take, and it says, don't turn your PC off. This will take a while. Like, <laughs> like a yeah, you got like a weird crap thing happening. It, it turned into a flight attendant. This will take a while. Are you, I, are you typing right now? You sound like you're typing. Huh? There's like a clack, 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 clack sound. Uh, yeah, it's the crackle from uh, the, the speaker. I don't have headphones for this right now. I can't find them. Well, I'm at a loss, right? All I said, all I heard was lock, Rick. <laughs> oh. Oh, Hold on, let me see. Let me, let me see. <laughs> this. Oh. All right, yeah, we're gonna have technical. <laughs> Locking it. <laughs> it's, it's like it's turning into a scene from Blair Witch. Dude, it doesn't make me like there goes audio settings. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow you made it worse. <laughs> That's not <bad>. No. <laughs> I heard like one, I heard like a half a thing you just said. <laughs> Let me restart this. <laughs> uh, if you enjoy this kind of entertainment, folks, please uh, like and subscribe to the video right there. See Rick, uh, you know, kind of, kind of uh, lose it. It's always fun. Uh, thanks to Rick and uh, Hondo last week holding down the fort. I was out, so sick. So they held it down. So de definitely check it out. Uh, you know, check out the videos uh, with some some fun older ones too. I got some fun top ten lists and what have you. So yeah, definitely check those out. And uh, yeah, we're trying to try to work on some more stuff, but you know, time not enough time in the day. But any likes and subscribes will help out immensely, for sure. And uh, Rick is frozen on his screen. Uh, let's see. Hopefully, he, uh, we'll remove him from now <laughs> until he gets in. <laughs> it's very unnerving staring at Rick right there. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. We could talk about this since, uh, once Rick gets his uh, shit together. Uh, where is this? Uh, I want to talk to Rick about that. Uh, so Marvel announced their, uh, free comic book day. Uh, they have a couple titles coming out. Uh, I guess a lot of this is like leading up to judgment day. Uh, this is, I guess was one of X-Men Avengers crossover. So that should be fun. Uh, so free comic book day is, of course, is May 7th, usually the first Saturday of May every year. They had to miss it, of course, last year because of uh, uh, COVID. They had it a little later in, this, in the year. How are we, how we doing, Effort? Are we good? Uh, a lot better? better. Yes, yes. yes. All right. <laughs> a lot better. Com computer just restarted 30%. It's going. It's going. <laughs> I am the show. It should be ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so forty-eight <laughs> percent. Yeah, keep us updated. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> update on the update, please. Uh, so I'm just going over uh, the free comic book day for Marvel, uh, May seventh. Uh, we got uh, Avengers uh, X Men number one. Uh, it's the first chapter of Judgment Day event. Uh, I don't know what that uh, what that's going to be about. Uh, and the second annual uh, Hellfire Gala. And it's going to be a debut of an, uh, a new hero. So this should be fun. Uh, Judgment Day Prelude, uh, directed, uh, uh, Prelude Story by Karen Gillian and Dustin Weaver. Uh, Karen Gillian's a great writer. Uh, definitely, definitely check out uh, their work. Who, what the, that, oh, wait. Why am I confusing her with somebody else? The actress? Karen Gillian? Uh, yeah, probably. Okay, that's how I'm confusing her with. Yeah, the, guy, the lady who played Nebula, right? Yeah. Okay. That's, uh, Karen, that's Karen not, Gillian? It's some, uh, it's some, something similar. Yeah. Or Karen Gillen or something like that. All right. Like I'm that. confusing them. Uh, X-Men Hellfire Club prelude story uh, by Gary Duggan. Gary Duggan, another great uh, 
uh, great writer. Uh, and the beginning of a new hero called Bloodline uh, and the story by Danny Lore and Karen DeBoer. So this uh, should be interesting. Uh, yeah, they're, they're Marvel's free comic book days have always been pretty interesting and they're good for setup for uh, like uh, <coughs> uh, Marvel story, uh, storylines. Uh, story so that should be interesting. And Spider-Man Venom number one is again, uh, is another uh, free comic book day. Uh, this is coming coming off uh, the heels of um, let's see. Uh, so yeah, they're gonna be uh, amazing. Spider Man number one goes on sale on April six. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, it's gonna have Al Ewing, uh, Brian Hitch are gonna do some stuff in it. So yeah, that should be fun. Uh, and there's gonna be a free comic book day special by John Romita Jr. who's taking over uh, the Amazing Spider Man. They're restarting number one, of course, which I'm sick of number ones, but of course that's the business. <laughs> But this is collect. Yeah, it's all about the money. Yeah, it, it's uh, one thing I do like about what Marvel's doing is they'll do. They're doing the number like they'll reboot it or whatever, but they'll still have the legacy number underneath, so you know uh, exactly when. Uh, oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, so you know how it like you know this is Avengers number fifty two, but in the legacy numbering it's like seven, uh, you know, eight hundred something, you know, like so that's which is cool. I, I'm glad they do that because you know they're not like totally like going away with the history well yeah they're that that's a that's embracing it man I, I i dig that shit right there yeah that's cool of them uh let's see all right that's a couple uh let's, a couple uh some figure stuff figure news not uh oh well that's not the one what the hell is it oh, i know i did the same thing last week <laughs> 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 there you go uh yeah she's not easy huh is it <laughs> no 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 I, I i saw the picture i was like i went straight to it. i was like no and then it came <laughs> The right one. The uh, right so we one. got uh, figure news coming out. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, um, Super Seven's gonna be coming out with some Bruce Lee uh, figure uh, figures, which is very exciting. I think they're gonna do some Ultimate ones, and they're doing uh, their their reaction uh, three and three quarter ish uh, figures too, and the uh, six seven inch figures, which is awesome. I love me some Bruce Lee. Uh, some of the Bruce Lee figures that come out over the years have not been great in my opinion. I think they got the look kind of off. So hopefully they get the, the head sculpts right on this. Uh, so yeah, they're going to be releasing a bunch of stuff on Thursday, uh, like uh, some pre-orders and stuff. So we'll have some photos for you guys next week. But this is just a little preview of what they're coming out with. Anything you uh, you would want from a Bruce Lee line? Oh man, uh, I'd like the Chinese connection. I'd like his uh, the glasses. Uh, and, yeah, yeah, that'd be and cool. the glasses and the and the and the and the and the uniform of the of the phone uh, telephone repairman. Uh, yeah. I thought that that'd be sick. Of course, you get you know you get the classic uh, uh, yellow yellow yeah, and black suit. Death. Yeah, the game of death suit. You gotta have yeah. that. So the game, game of death. And uh, people we'll stop calling it the bride outfit. Like uh, yeah. No, yeah, right. <laughs> it's like for for real. Is that what we're calling it out? The bride outfit. Fuck, man. Like, oh, forgot they forgot about uh they forgot <laughs> about fucking uh, Bruce, man. Oh, Bruce, man. Come on, no, never forget about. Uh, Bruce. Let me see. I, probably that first one he came in. Uh, we just take the white with the white shirt, the white t-shirt and the fucking black yeah. pants look. Yeah, it's that would be fucking classic, man. Yeah, we could get uh, uh, some of his villains too. Uh, dude from uh, Enter the Dragon, be cool with the claw and everything. Yeah, yeah. dude, uh, I'd like to get uh, fucking Kareem. Kareem would be cool. That'd be, a, be a sick ass fucking. Uh, uh, that'd be a sick ass one. Chuck Norris. John Saxon would be cool. John Saxon would be cool. Oh, what's the guy that fucking uh, Alex loves, man? Uh, oh no, it is John Saxon, but there's yeah. that other guy, the guy with the afro. Was it Jim? Uh, fuck, what's his name? Oh, oh wow. I can't remember. Right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim, yeah. not not Jim, o, not Jim Bryan or Jim O'Brien or something like that. I can't forget. I can't remember his name now. Shit. Oh, ninety-eight percent. Almost there. <laughs> <laughs> Almost there. Just when you start getting good. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, this is coming from Hasbro this week. Uh, they're going to be doing um, uh, Hasbro's going to be doing Indiana Jones figures, uh, which is awesome. Uh, you know, Hasbro's been kind of killing it. They got you know they got everything right now. They got uh, Star Wars, Marvel, uh, GI Joe, uh, Power Rangers, uh, pretty much everything right now. So they're going to be coming out with some um, uh, some uh, new. Uh, new uh six inch uh six inch uh indiana jones figures which is exciting i can't uh, i think these are coming out next year but they're announced right now 
Uh, so it's pretty. It's pretty exciting. I'm. I'm. I'm uh, I love Indiana Jones, of course, like most most folks. Uh, so of course we'll probably get Indy in his different incarnations, different uh, the different movies. I, I like Temple of Doom, Indy with the sword. Uh, uh, I think that would be uh, be awesome. Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing you know some of the the. Uh, I don't know how much are they going to do with some of the Nazi characters from, uh, but the little lieutenant dude. I always always fuck up his name. What's the, what's the deal with the le- the glasses and the the hat? I can't remember his name. To, to always, fuck I, it. I, they call him I, the, mel- <laughs> the Melter. I, the I Melter. Know. Yeah, I always, he has a weird name. Like always. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. He. I have the the old school uh, figure. The little three and three quarter figure from him. So um, Dude, as always, much as I fucking watch that movie, I should fucking know his name. Yeah, right. No, I'm always, I always look it up and I always forget it. It's 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 weird. <laughs> Let me see what, it, what it, it's it's a weird. Uh, yeah, it's a weird name. I always forget it too. Um, but uh, yeah, no. What uh, what uh, what any uh, particular figures you want to see from this line? Any uh, uh, from the from the uh, Indiana Jones? I like a, bro- a Brody. Uh, Martin, yeah, Brody would be good. Uh, his dad, uh, Henry uh, Henry Jones Senior. Uh, Tut. His name is T O H T. Yeah. Tut. Uh, who? Cot. Yeah, he'd be good. Yeah, um, I him. The strong man, the strong man Nazi, yeah. the one he fucking yeah. knocked into the uh, into the plane uh, propeller. That that guy'd be sick. Uh, Sal uh, Salah would be good. Yeah. Uh, Dude, there's a there's a lot of figures you can do. You, you could do uh Marion Raven, uh Marion Ravenwood, uh who else? Elsa. Yeah, Elsa. Uh, uh, I like uh, Elsa. what's a oh short round? Short round be cool. Uh I wouldn't mind actually Kate Blanchett from uh, uh Kingdom. I thought yeah. she her look was good. I liked her look. Yeah, uh, so yeah, I, I assume this Cal? is good. Yeah. Oh no, La- is it no, it's Lao, right? Lao, Lao, Lao. Lao. Uh the dude uh from Temple of Doom, the fucking uh uh in his fucking garb and shit when he Kalima wouldn't mind seeing Oh that. Molaram. Molaram yeah. fucking dope. With the fucking headdress and shit, that would be fucking awesome. The fucking flame comes with a flaming heart. Yeah, like a little heart and you could put, throw it put it in his hand, that'd be fucking awesome. Uh so yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I, I think uh we have indie did indie film, yeah, indie filmed, right? I think they shut down for a little bit because I think Harrison Ford got injured. I think that he got injured. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure if they started filming again or they finished filming, but it's supposed to be coming out next year, I believe. Uh, so yeah, yeah, 2023, uh, June 2023. So yeah, this kind of makes sense for them to come out with it, and they already have like a big, all the big Disney licenses as you know, uh, Star Wars and Marvel. So yeah, this was kind of a no-brainer. So th- this could be fun. Oh, it's gonna be real good fun. I just want to know how many uh how many figures they're gonna have. That, that's the yeah, the, the part the standard. Like usually they, they come out with five uh five figures uh the initial release. So i would be cool to see kind of like maybe uh every every line is a different movie. Do a five five figures from every movie maybe for the first uh, first part, and then you can like mix and match and do different characters. But I, I wouldn't mind seeing indie and different versions of uh, different versions of indie, some villains. Uh, this could be a fun line, man. This could be another line that's gonna hurt my pocket. So, uh, yeah. yeah. How much are cool. these running at? Uh, Hasbro figures are about twenty five dollars. Uh, there was a big howdy do about you know them raising their prices recently, but yeah, that's kind of how it, the world is, man. Everything's you know you can't buy the same shit you did you know five years ago for the same price. So uh, it's only a couple bucks, and uh, you know it's it's not too bad. But uh, yeah, about twenty five bucks. These will be running. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I know you can't wait for a mutt mutt figure. <laughs> yeah, I do love Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> he ain't Shia LaBeouf, Shia. Uh, I, I like Shia, man. I like Shia. He's a little crazy, but I like him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, speaking of some more uh, '80s property. Uh, so we got He Man coming out uh, next uh, uh, on Netflix. Uh, supposedly this is finally coming out. Uh, this has been rumored for a while. Um, uh, we've, uh, we've talked about it. Uh, I think they just, uh, this coming out has like a low, but like uh, Netflix, well, Netflix is not really low budget anymore. They do put money in it, but I don't know. I, I, I have a feeling this won't be as epic as it needs to be on the big screen. I think this is, uh, so this uh, being on Netflix kind of, kind of kills it a little bit for me. Uh, but we got Kyle Allen, 
uh, playing uh, He Man, uh, which uh, he needs to get with uh, whoever gave uh, 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 Brad Pitt steroids in Troy to like bulk up because he does not look like He Man. Like uh, in this, he's got a good good jawline, which you need for He Man. But uh, I think you pointed uh, pointed out like yeah, he'd be good as a uh, Prince Adam. But, Prince Adam. Uh, yeah, unless they're gonna like use CG to kind of bulk him up, uh, which is mm, sometimes is hit and miss. Uh, but what do you think of this, man? Are you uh, excited about <laughs> Universal? Live I'm ex- I'm excited about He Man because it's going to be, you know, it's a, uh, it's to me, it's more fantasy, you know, dragons, dungeons, and but they kind of include, uh, you know, technology into into the fantasy, which is which is cool, you know, everything evolves in in when it comes to storylines and shit. But this cat, I mean. When they're saying they cast him as He Man, I was like, "You mean Prince Adam, right?" <laughs> like, not uh, not to be a dick, but nothing about him fucking screams He Man. No, uh, it can't. Let's it can't be that. It's up like huge. Yeah, it's just. Uh, is he gonna? He's definitely gonna have to go to whatever uh, guy fucking was working out with. Uh, what was his uh, Kum- Kumail Nanjali? For uh, Eternals, because yeah. Homeboy went from being just regular dude to being fucking yoked and ripped. So yeah, I don't understand why he got all ripped for. He like he was barely like he didn't barely had any action scenes. He, he didn't. But, have I, but they they <laughs> they, I, they asked him to do it and he did it. And, yeah. But well, to me, yeah, I think yeah, this yeah. cat needs to this cat's gonna need to do that because I I just don't want it to be like He Man where it's all of us. It's like dude, it's He Man. This motherfucker better like at one point like bah, and just like Hulk Hogan through the fucking shirt or whatever, dude. He, it's like there's a transformation that goes on with him, man. You know, yeah. it's like I, I don't want to yeah. see. Uh, yeah, I don't want to. I don't, I don't want to see fucking. I don't want to see little guy, he man. I want to see he man. You know, not we man, he man. Yeah, uh, if if we man was he man, I'd fucking probably get behind that shit. The little <laughs> motherfucker, would be like, yeah, I got the power, fool. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't know, man. I, they, they've been talking about doing he man for a while, and I think Christian Harloff put it best. Like, he needs to be, it needs to be Star Wars meets Lord of the Rings, man. That's what. That's it needs exactly. To be. Yeah, that's exactly what it needs to it needs be. To be a fucking high concept fantasy kind of space opera kind of thing, not just. Uh, hopefully, they don't go the cheesy route because you can easily make it go cheesy with it. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I think He-Man has a great potential, but being on Netflix, I don't know. I just don't know they're going to put the right oh, heart into Netflix, it. Netflix has been uh, churning out some good stuff, man. Uh, yeah. I actually, yeah. I, I'm, I'm actually pro Netflix right now at the moment. They actually do <laughs> uh, uh, fucking do shit, which I fucking, I, I, uh, I dig and shit, you know? Like, I like, I like their Lock and Key series. Uh, some people don't. It, it, I know it varies from the uh, from from the source material, but everything does these days. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, don't, it, it, I wonder what the rest of the cast go look like. I wonder how deep they're going to go into the lore, or do they going to just kind of make? Is it going to be in He Man and name only, or is it going to this? Are they really going to go and try to capture yeah. the essence of the show? Uh, we'll see. Uh, this is going to be interesting to follow and see. Uh, you know, I won't pass any judgment till I see He Man on. You know, like see a, a shot of him on set. Uh, and oh, we got two Graysons. Oh, oh let's remove this imposter. <laughs> there we go. Real Flynn Grayson, please stand up. There you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh wait a minute. She's just like, oh, so you fucked up. There you have to bed. I have the power, then transform. Why is it still active? <laughs> Where, there we go. <laughs> oh, I feel much more comfortable now. Let me see. Uh, oh, yeah, fuck this guy, man. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, There's so many characters. <laughs> to me, the, the main thing is I, I, I want to see who's going to play uh, Skeletor. Uh, yeah, that's what uh, Lori put in the chat right here. Yeah, who's playing Skeletor? That's the question. Who'd be a good Skeletor? Frank Langella. Uh, actually, no. I, I, actually, I just just popped in my head right now. I think uh, Bill Hader. <laughs> it'd be a too, it'd be a funny one, but if he, he, he played it straight, he could play it straight. Yeah, he, he'd be a great one, dude. Hey, man. <laughs> and, and he does have a great uh, big face to do a good yeah. prosthetic on it, dude. 
Yeah, I don't know. That, that just popped in my head. But yeah, you can, you know, just somebody that, you know, it's good and menacing and uh, kind of maniacal, kind of, because his skeletor is crazy. Like Frank Lagella did a good job, but he kind of more playing more of a serious kind of like villain. But Skeletor in the cartoon is Skeletor is a fucking yeah, he's a beast. He's a moron. He fucking ah, my plan's going to work. Like, hey man, uh, Big Leo four one five, Wimpy man. <laughs> oh yeah, this guy. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chris, what's up, Krista? Happy Lunar New Year, nerds! Year of the Tiger. It's the year of the tiger. In and... Yeah, let's go, let's go, Tigers. Uh, I love Tigers. Uh, let's go Bengals. Yeah, let's go Bengals. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. This, this uh, I definitely want to see who else they cast in this. Uh, I want to see how, what kind of. I want to see the budget too. I'm I'm curious about the budget. Like, yeah, it's on Netflix and they are spending money on stuff, but how much money are they going to put into this? You know, uh, like this should be epic. This should be an epic fucking movie. So uh, I don't know. I, I'm cautiously, cautiously optimistic, I guess. Uh, but we'll see. Um, but they, so far, the cast in this guy doesn't get me juiced at all. And it's kind of a hard role to cast, anyways. Like I don't think anybody they cast uh, would get me juiced, anyways. So I, I think we'll see. We'll give the ch- kid a chance. Well, I, I want to see him on set in the He-Man uh, garb and how he looks. We'll see. Maybe we'll, you know, we'll uh, maybe we'll, we'll eat our words uh, down the line. We're like, oh man, that He-Man movie was awesome. Remember where we had doubts, uh, Laurie, Dave Bautista, as Skeletor. It's not bad. Uh, I could see him as other. I could see him as other characters in the He Man I could see him as Man at Arms or Beast Man. He'd be a good Beast Man. He'd be a good Beast Man. Uh, yeah. He'd be. He'd be a lot. Of, I'd, I'd actually want him to be a fucking. I wouldn't want him to be Beast Man, dude. I'd want him to be a little bit more I, like Man Josh, at Arms. Josh Brolin would be a good Man at Arms. Josh Brolin, yeah. Maybe a good Man. He has that voice and that gravitas, and the right age too. Like I can see him kind of like fucking. Man, we're gonna have to start casting these shows and fucking. Like, <laughs> this, is, this is how you cast it, guys. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Like, what? Are, he's too expensive. Fucking shoot for the stars, fucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got Kieran Gillian as Tila. Uh, damn, we're casting everybody from fucking Marvel, right? Shit. <laughs> well, fucking I, I, with her, I'd, I'd want, I'd, I'd want to go a little bit more unknown. Because you can. You know, oh, yeah. well, I'm sure. Well, this guy's fucking pretty unknown right here. Is, fa- oh, this guy's a fucking yeah. I maybe, don't know. Yeah, maybe you need to cast a couple stars around him to kind of you know elevate his performance. But yeah, uh, yeah this, this could. Uh, we'll, we'll be following this. We'll, we'll, what's, what's this guy's name again? Josh Kyle Allen. Kyle Allen, yeah. Sounds like a backup quarterback. Yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, he's <laughs> like some backup quarterback for the fucking Broncos. Uh, yeah, we'll be following this. Uh, we're big uh, He-Man fans from back in the day. I, you know, I had all the figures. Loved, well, loved the cartoon back in the day. A cartoon does not hold up <laughs> nowadays. But uh, the figures are great. They're awesome figures, man. I still got, you know, I, I have a small collection. Not, not my not my favorite toy line to collect, but I still have a couple uh, figures here and there. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how this uh, this goes. Uh, let's see. Let's go. Hey, what was our first topic we talked about, you know, real quick before I got, you know, uh, Brian Augustine. Oh yeah. All right. Sorry. Uh, yeah. And then Howard Essman. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about this. Uh, we, uh, we discussed, uh, last what, two weeks ago about, uh, Microsoft buying, uh, Activision, well, not yeah. Activision, um, yeah, Activision, right? Activision Blizzard. Blizzard, yeah, there you go. Uh, so yeah, this uh, we got. So we got another deal in here. The, the, so this is uh, the war has begun. Sony's uh, acquiring Bungie. Uh, Bungie, who of course who uh, makes Halo and a bunch of other. Uh, uh, Destiny. Of Destiny, yeah. Uh, for reported three point six billion uh, in the latest move, uh, have been a string of block purchases, purchases from the uh, gaming industry. Um, yeah, uh, Bungie is best known for developing Halo, the mega popular franchise that puts Sony's rival Xbox on the map, which is very true, as well as the first person shooter franchise Destiny. Uh, the studio is currently wor- working on expanding Destiny 2 in the latest release while working on a new unnamed IP to launch in uh, 2025. Uh, so this is a very interesting because a lot of people were like, oh, like uh, Microsoft's buying Activision, they're going to have call- the rights to Call of Duty. So now, Sony just kind of, this is their chess move. We're like, all right, you bought Call of Duty. Now we're going to buy Halo. Uh, so Halo for me. And that's one of the one things that I, I kind of miss by Xbox is the Halo series. Like the first three Halos are awesome. I love Fucking it. amazing. 
I will be talking about more some uh, Halo stuff in a second. Uh, but uh, this is uh, interesting, man. I'm our resident game expert, what do you what do you think of this, dude? Yeah, it's not too much of a big fire uh, shot fired, but it's pretty much like an opening salvo of fucking like sending your emissary to let them know it's like, all right, I see what you're doing. This is what we're doing now. And acquiring Bungie's fucking pretty, it's a pretty good opening salvo shot, dude, because these guys do make fucking quality games. And I think that's what it's about. They said they're going to, Bungie did say they're going to keep uh, creating, it's not going to be a, uh, a PlayStation exclusive, which is smart on their part, because yeah. they, like we talked about last time, it'd be stupid to close your doors to uh, to the other people, right? Much so, much and this is based off a tweet that the guys from Microsoft said. They're like, "Oh no, don't worry about it. We're going to honor our contract, and we're going to continue making games for them." So apparently, they don't, they're only there was only like a contract for other three more games, and I've heard that they were going to just like bring out some remastered stuff. And that would satisfy the need of the contract. And then after that, we don't know what's going to happen because it's just the way they, it, you know, like you take the wording of somebody's tweet. These fucking companies are very smart in how they tweet their, their information and responses. It's a, it's a chess match, man. Yeah. So, like they, they, all, they don't just like willy nilly, like drunk text, like fucking late night. No, they go through like, oh, I'm going to send this out. Change this word, change this word. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, Sony, by doing this, they are locking up probably one of the finest developing teams like out there for uh for gaming the one thing is i could say the same thing for blizzard i i hated when activision took over because activision is one of those parent companies that's going to start telling you hey they're the studio hey wh wh when's this supposed to be released two months ago you got to get it you got to get it out there and then what happens is the game releases and all of a sudden, it starts getting panned because it's a broken game they deliver you. Yeah. People don't like paying $60 for a game that's incomplete. Next thing you know, six weeks later, you're getting fucking shit ton of patches every fucking week yeah, every to time repair the shit that they fucked up on. Yeah. We, so, yeah. yeah I, I, the one thing I'll say, Sony has a good record as far as their game development like the 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 parent company sony like they they make some awesome games sony entertainment uh fucking spider-man games are fucking great even though they bring in another uh thing to release it but uh like their old games like socom kill zone uh it, this is these are all fucking gran turismo these are all sony properties so i'm just glad that if bungie is bought by them the quality of the game is going to remain. Sony yeah. won't. Sony won't release a product. Uh, they won't release a game before because they don't. They already seen the headache. Cyberpunk is the fucking biggest, biggest example uh, in the last in the last two years. Avengers, Avengers also that game got fucking. It was buggy, yeah, but I think Cyber Cyberpunk. The thing that pissed people off. It was a broken game off bat. They yeah. knew and they knew it. Yeah, and people, Fallout, Fallout seventy six. They knew it. They, they like this. Is, there's a good game in there too. If they would have waited, like, uh, yeah, it sucks for people that want the game. But, dude, if you want a good game, you can wait, man. Like, it's uh, I'd rather wait and get something good than get get it rushed and get some crap that I have to fucking uh, update every five seconds. So this is the problem, and I think the one thing that leads to that and um, to forcing the game to come out, I think companies need to slow their rolls when it comes to trying to get fucking uh, early pre-sales on 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 video games. Because I remember back in the day, I, I, I fucking threw $20 down on uh, StarCraft Ghost. That was going to be, I was a, it was by Blizzard and everything. But, you know, Blizzard fell so behind because of what they were doing with Warcraft. They weren't developing it. And then they Activision bought them out, killed the game completely. Eventually, I got my $20 back. But it's just, I, w I was so fucking happy and fucking excited to get this game that, you know. And now, when... The demand is so high for the game, they just push it through. They yeah. just push it through, dude. Yeah, because they, they figure, oh, people are just fucking, you know, they'll be happy just to get it. But Exactly. You know, like, people are, like, get bummed. Like, I've, I've had games where I bought and, like, oh, this is kind of lame. This is kind of lame. And, you know, and it's, like, sucks. You can't really take it back, really, you know. To, you know, it's, like, if you buy it digitally and shit, you're kind of just stuck with it. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be interesting. But it, if this opens up, we're, like, no, we're just going to have cross-platform. Cross, uh, 
uh, cross platforms. No like exclusives anymore. If I could play Halo on my PS5, that's gonna be awesome because I I, lo- I like the Halo franchise and I've I've only played. I think I played a little bit of four. I think that was the last time I I played any Halo. Uh, so yeah, I I think that Microsoft owns the actual Halo name now, so Bungie doesn't have the rights to it. Which I think that's why they created Destiny. If if you if you really like uh if you really like Halo, I, I I'm definitely gonna recommend Destiny. Destiny is to me is is like the worthy successor in the evolution of what they would have done. Uh, I love the fact that there's a three man party that, and there's a six man party. If you want to do bigger fucking giant bosses, they, they, you know, you can go raiding and the different classes that you play for halo. It's cool playing as master chief and everything. You'll get that PVP in, in destiny. Uh, but I actually think that destiny now might be a superior game based on just the longevity. Cause the guy, I think we're, we're, we're playing on memories these days. You know how, when we talk about Goldeneye. You're like, yeah, it's probably not as good as we remember it. And I think the same thing can probably be used to Halo, especially when you start playing these well, newer games. Knows. I was never a huge Gold Knife fan. I never owned it, so I guess I can't. Yeah, awesome. I've only played it. Yeah, it's a good game. Game. It's a good game. game, but yeah. Uh, good movie. Don't, don't hate. <laughs> I, I like Gold Knife. It is. It's good. But you remember the game more? Uh, let's see. Uh, Lori, uh, Ray, your skeleton is awesome. Thank you, Lori. He-Man. It's going to start with He-Man. He-Man. <laughs> oh, the uh, Skeletor laughing video is the best. Man. <laughs> uh, Kyle, let's okay. play for the Washington. Yeah, football team. <laughs> yeah, that didn't name itself. Right? <laughs> uh, you're forgiven, Big Leo. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lori, thoughts on Zeus Schwarzenegger tease? Uh, that's for uh, that's for Super Bowl. That's for a Super Bowl ad. Oh, right. okay. Maybe like Doritos or some shit. He looks cool as Zeus. That'd be cool to throw it in. A, you know, throw him in a fucking Shazam or something as Zeus. Uh, you know, he should be playing like some kind of god. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I think that's for uh, a Super Bowl ad. Uh, Sony and Microsoft, they're creating their own metaverse. Yeah, everybody, yeah, uh, Big Little, yeah, it's uh, it's all, everybody's trying to create their own little, you know, hub of media uh, dominance. So, you know, everyone's trying to, you know, buy up all these companies. It's create a monopoly, really. You know, there's only you know, going to be, what, four companies that own the world, really, at this point. Uh, but if we get good content, sure, I'm all uh, for it. Uh, make the Oasis so Rick can fucking be happy finally. You know, you know, you know who's the big acquisition though right now, right? Uh, I don't think they're with any of the either of the two big ones, but whoever acquires EA, that's they're they're going to be the winner. Because the one thing I know is I think Sony's a lot closer to acquiring 2K Games right now. That that's that's the other studio I've heard that they're after is 2K Games. So 2K is a great company. They make some awesome fucking games. But if they can get EA... Wasn't 2K you know, a Sega company? Huh? Wasn't 2K a Sega company? Oh, yeah, I, I think so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they worked exclusively with Sega. Mm, okay. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, man. Yeah, that new, that new WWE game looks like ass, man. We saw a trailer uh, for it. Yeah. Uh, well, they, like, they, well, they, you know, they... They spent all this time to like start. They didn't make a game for the past couple of years because their last game sucked balls. Now this new one looks like it's fucking. <laughs> it looks like it's fucking ass, man. Oh my god, look like it looks like 2018. Like 2018 was definitely the best. The best one, I think. Uh, but yeah, this yeah this, yeah it's not looking. I'm uh, hopefully hopefully that AEW game comes out and fucking kills it, man. I'm hoping. Uh, I'm I'm hearing the AEW game is going to be good, but it's going to be a little bit more arcadey. So. Don't expect it to be as good as those old WWE iterations. At first, it's the first game. First engine usually always has some for some okay. issues. Yeah, it's all those guys from Jukes coming over and making it. So, it's- so yeah, that's that's to me when you hear that shit, it's like music to your ears, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, hopefully, man. Hopefully, I, I, I'm I've been feeding for a good wrestling game for a while, man. So we'll see. Uh, so speaking of Halo, uh, since we're talking about Halo, uh, let's jump to uh, we got. Halo uh, TV show coming out. Uh, we got a new uh, TV series at Paramount Plus. Uh, this is going to be on March 24th. Uh, let's see. Do they say they're going to be? Yeah. This, so this is going. They made a big push of this. Uh, this premiered uh, this past weekend during uh, the uh, the first uh, NFL games. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be. Uh, so yeah, this trailer came out. Looks it looks like a Halo TV show. Looks like what you would expect from a Halo. What you expect from Halo? Fuck yeah. yeah. Yeah, like Master Chief looks good. You <laughs> Master Chief? Uh, Pablo Schreiber. I I remember him from what was that? Uh, there was a show called Lights Out. Uh, uh, 
about about a boxer on uh, on FX. Okay. He was, yeah, 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 he he was the uh, he was the little brother who was like the promoter. Okay. Yeah, yeah. he's a good actor, dude. Yeah, are they are they pulling the Mandalorian on this one where you're not gonna see his face, which of course like the game, you don't you never actually see uh, Master Chief's face. Uh, yeah, and they they've been trying to work on this for a long time. I think Peter Jackson had the rights for a minute. And uh, that uh, pretty much they were going to make uh, a Halo movie. That's what kind of turned into District Nine. Uh, them trying to make a Halo movie. I think uh, Denzel Washington, uh, Washington at one point was going to play Master Chief. Oh, that would have been awesome. Uh, so yeah, this has been around for a minute. Uh, they, they've been talking about this. So they finally, I guess, settled on a TV show. Uh, this is on Paramount Plus, of course. Uh, they're making a bit, like I said, they're making a big push for it. Uh, the trailer looked cool. It looked like what you would expect from a Halo movie. Uh, Halo show. Um, I, I don't have Paramount Plus. I don't think I'll purchase uh, Paramount Plus for this. You don't have. You don't have to, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, Rick has his account uh, ready to go because I'm thinking his. Um, yeah. So this this looks like pretty much like uh, I heard some people bitching about the fucking uh, the AI, the uh, the hub. Uh, what's that? Cardona. What the Cortana. Hell? Cortana, yeah, people bitching about that, but whatever, man. People can't just watch anything and just not bitch about it, like, nowadays. Like, even when there's reason to bitch about it, like, just fucking let, let, let it play out. Uh, so, uh, yeah, what'd you think, man? What'd you think of this trailer? Looks dope. Uh, it look, looks, looks fucking sick. I, I don't know about any of these. Uh, I heard, I know a couple of directors on this, but I'm not sure about uh, the show creator, Kyle Killian. I'm not, I don't think I've ever paid attention to anything else he's done, Uh Oh, he did Fear Street. Okay, he's one of the writers from Fear Street, uh, the the, Net, the Netflix uh, trilogy of the the slasher one. So, I, I enjoyed that one. So, I like one a lot. all right. So yeah, it's a. Uh, I dude, I'm excited to, just the way it looks. Uh, I, I'm glad. I think I'm glad for a show like The Mandalorian more than ever now, because it, it that's the one that kicked the doors open for I think something like this to get made. They're like, oh. It's, the actor doesn't ever have to show his face. I think that was the big thing. You know, you got a guy like Denzel uh, Washington attached. You want to fucking show Denzel on on screen. Yeah. You know that that was the that was a thing with uh, Snake Judge Eyes. Dredd. Yeah, Judge Dredd said to him too, like fucking and yeah. Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, yeah. It, it's I'm I'm glad that Carl Urban decided that fuck. It's more important to keep the fucking you know the helmet on than than anything because you're Dread. Yeah. It's a very you know it's it's detriment to the character it's a very very uh, crucial to the character like you know it's if the character in the uh, the, co the comic or cartoon whatever doesn't take off the mask you shouldn't in the movie you just uh yeah and if, it, if it's if it's that important to you you shouldn't take that role you should just get an unknown actor if that's so like people are like oh i need to see it. my face needs to be seen yeah no that's fine i'm glad a guy like pablo schreiber he's like yeah i'll fucking do it and a guy like uh uh uh, fuck, uh pedro pascal you know, they're bigger. The role is bigger than what they think, you know, than them. They're not doing it for the recognition. They're doing it for the role. Uh, and the only thing I'm waiting to see more of is is battle. Uh, I want to see them going into like a covenant fucking like hive. And it's just hella quiet and gives you that aliens feeling when, you know, Hudson gets the the thing, you know, blinking on his uh on his tracker. It, it's, it has to have those same same vibes because the one thing is at, at times i know you, you remember going into those holes in fucking halo you just see things scurrying and then all of a sudden yeah. you're bombarded yeah. so yeah. i want those moments definitely in the fucking they, in the, show. Yeah, they, they, the games really capture that like tone you hear that little theme and you're just going in these caves and it's just like you by yourself and yeah man those games are great man like great the storylines are great and uh, the action was fun, and you know, I never play. I was never a multiplayer guy uh, on those games, so I never got the tea, uh, tea bag anybody. But that was unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> but it, uh, this looks like the game on the big on the small screen. Like um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely check this out. Did you say how many episodes we're gonna get with this? Uh, let me see. I don't think so. Not just Halo TV series. Uh, anything with Bokeem uh, Woodborn in it? You got it. You got it. Yeah, Bokeem Woodbine's awesome, dude. Uh, he's, He's just fucking popping up everywhere at this point. It looks right? like it's a it's gonna be ten episodes. Oh, nine episodes. Okay, no, that's yeah. good. good. Looks like they looks like they condensed it. Are you saying how long the episodes are gonna be? Uh, uh how long? Let me see. Episode length. I, I kind of like nowadays where like you just make the episodes how long they need to be. Like a uh, Boba Fett, Book of Boba Fett, and these shows where like some of them are like thirty five minutes, some of them are forty five minutes. Like whatever you know, just. 
I prefer like the 45 minute 50 range because I think you get a, a good like 30 minutes on a show. It just unless uh, unless you're like a sitcom, like a funny show, like I, I need 40 45 minutes to 50 minutes of a show for in the, for per episode at least. 60 minutes. 60 minutes. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, and so basically, get a nine hour. Oh, now, yeah, you're gonna get a nine hour mid series. Halo movie. That's good. Yeah. So, uh, Lori, Halo looks a bit like Starship Troopers. Yeah, yeah like kind of like that, you know, Space Marine kind of vibe. You know, it, the, the one, the one thing I like is that the Covenant's actually smart. They're not, they're, they're not stupid, mindless creatures. They're not a, excuse me, they're not a hive creature, kind of like the Arachnids from uh, Starship Troopers. They're, they're fucking, they're, they're an army. They're, they're an invading army. There's, they, have, they have similar fucking. They're comedic. The little fuckers are hella comedic and shit. They're gonna be running around trying to shoot with fucking big ass guns. The big ass fucking covenant. It's, that's gonna it's gonna be sick, dude. I can't wait. This uh, this has potential to be the best uh, video game TV show. There hasn't been many, but yeah, Mortal Kombat. Um, yeah, that wasn't that was still shit. Yeah, I've watched the whole season. Last of Us coming out this year at the end of the year. So yeah, it's gonna be a good good year for video game uh, ad- uh, adaptations. You got Sonic Two coming out this year too from Paramount. So. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be good. Uh, I think they, I think they're getting the formula where you know, like you now, like we didn't have a good video game adaption when Mortal Kombat the first movie was like the best video game adaption for a long time. That was a people's go to. But yeah, like Sonic was good. Uh, yeah, I think they're, I think they're kind of getting the formula where like, dude, you make it like the game. Like, that's there's a reason billions of people fucking play these games because uh, the story, the look, the feel of it, and it, you just capture that. Just you have the storyboards, you have everything. Like, uh, like you know, they have the designs, and they're all sitting there. All you have to do is pull those designs and uh, put it onto the screen. You know, just you know, instead of trying to like, oh, we're gonna make a Halo sh- show or movie, but we're gonna redesign everything and make it our own. Like, no, no, make it like the game because that's what people want. And and you, if you're gonna tear these kids away from the video game, you better make this fucking uh, uh, worth their fucking while, worth their time. So, uh, I just want to see a sticky bomb fucking thrown at something that actually sticks. That'd be sick. <laughs> Be cool. Then an explosion happens. No, no, I want to play Halo, man. I haven't played Halo at all. Uh, Lori, regarding characters with helmets like Vader, uh, we know it's James Earl Jones because of the voice, not the actor in the suit. It, I it, think it, that one is both. Yeah, and it's important the people that play the actors inside, like David Prowse and the guys, the stunt guys, and the guys that play the you know in Mandalorian, like those guys are they're they're acting, man. That's acting too. Uh, you can definitely uh, uh, change the voice on it, but. Like uh, in what uh, uh, in Phantom Menace, uh, Darth Maul, you know, Ray Park did the body, and a dude uh, from space did the voice. You know, like, Peter Serafinowicz. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's uh, it's important in all aspects to get get them both right, man. Get the voice right, get the body language right, and uh, you know, it, it, and it kind of saves saves time too. Uh, like for if you're gonna. Uh, cast certain people like they, they don't have to be on set. You have the stunt guy do this parts, and then the actor can come in later and voice. Uh, you know, so you don't have to wait for uh, wait for somebody scheduled uh, work around. So uh, it just makes sense. I'm glad they're going this route for sure. Uh, Big Leo four one five watch Yellowstone on Paramount. I, I, I haven't I, yet. I heard Yellowstone's amazing. Everyone like I a couple buddies watch it. Uh, they say it's really good. It's like a western, right? Yeah, it's like yeah. I'll fucking I'll probably check it out. I love westerns, man. Yeah. Yeah, I got yeah, I got check it out. Yeah, it's too many goddamn TV shows, man. It's hard to. Dude, I'll, I'll get I'll get you uh I'll get you Paramount Plus right after the show. <laughs> Rich got to fuck it. He's got to open his coat like I got you a Paramount <laughs> Plus right here. Got streaming service. Fuck the streaming wars. It's <laughs> Rick Flix. <laughs> Rick Flix. <laughs> Rick Flix. <laughs> Ricky Mount Plus. Uh, <laughs> uh, Lori, uh, The Witcher is a good adaption. Yeah. Once again. That's one thing that all three things are different. The game, the movie, or, or the game, the book, and the show. All, all They say all three are their own things, kind of like uh, Ready Player One, which is cool. It's cool. Yeah, well, yeah, like, make it good. Like, you mm-hmm. know, Just make it good. So like, it's not really like a true adaptation. It's like watching Wanted sometimes. I don't want, you know, I don't mind them changing shit. As long as, long as you make it good, I don't really care if you change, it, like, certain aspects. You know, right? like, as long as the heart is still there, the, the meat and potatoes is still there. Uh, you can change whatever you want, really. Uh, so let's uh, let's talk about a, a new adaption. Uh, we got a Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, coming out. Uh, this is uh, coming out for Netflix. Uh, they just dropped a trailer. Was it yesterday? Two yeah. days ago. Uh, 
just so this is going this going the Halloween route where you skip all the other movies because there's been what nine movies like nine yep. yeah, some movies. some real real cheesy ass ones too man the, yeah half the movies just did uh uh kind of re- going through all the um uh going through all the adaptions uh, with uh, the guys fuck it. Newt's not there anymore oh yeah. well, the guys from movie dumpster are good I like those okay. guys okay yeah. remind Tony. me of you so those are like yeah. <laughs> those are the movie Tony's dumpster. kind of a prick yeah he's kind of, yeah. He's kind of a prick. I like the other guys that are on it though. So yeah, they, they have some good, they have some good people on there. Yeah, the guys from Movie Dumpster are great, man. Check out their channel when uh, if you get a chance. They have some oh. great. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're they they go through some cutty cutty fucking uh, movies. Uh, those guys are good though. I like those guys. Uh, so this is uh, going yeah going the Halloween route. Uh, this is cut taking place. Uh, skipping all over the other sequels and stuff, which I think two is great. A great sequel. <laughs> I think two two might be. I do like two. Two Tennis might be. Hopper, right? Yeah, yeah, I love that one. That one. <laughs> Insane with that one. <laughs> the Gremlins two route where they just like, all right, fuck it, we're gonna make a sequel. I like Toby Hooper didn't want to do it, but he's balls, like, balls right. to the wall. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, and then there was like some prequels. There was like you know the Texas Chainsaw three D. They just they've been trying to do Texas Chainsaw a bunch like the last twenty years or so. Yeah, they did the Leatherface movie. Leatherface, yeah, a lot of them have been kind of mostly forgettable. Uh, and well, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre by Platinum Dunes wasn't that bad. It was brutal. Bad. I fucking actually kind of enjoyed it, but I didn't bad. like anything after that. What was the one with uh, Bacane and uh, Zoe? Oh, the, uh, the New Beginning. Yeah. Or or was it uh, or New Generation or something like that? I can't remember. Yeah, some shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that one. Yeah, that one's weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's great though. Bacane. Bacane. <laughs> Bacane is fucking nuts, nutballs in that shit, dude. It's hilarious. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we get the uh, trailer for the new Leatherface. Um, this yeah, uh, this uh, we have the chick from the original one coming back, uh, kind of doing her Laurie Strode impre- uh, impression. Uh, so uh, actually, uh, I, I kind of actually kind of liked the trailer. I kind of dug it. I kind of like. Uh, I was I was surprised. I, I was kind of going into it like, uh, do I need another Texas Chainsaw Massacre? But this looks cool. I'm I'm, I'm all for the uh, the, the kind of like the skipping over stuff and kind of just doing your own thing. Uh, for the most part, I think it's it's a good way to uh, uh, kind of kind of not be hop, uh, bogged down by all the continuity that all these other fucking movies have, and just kind of go make your own sequel and do your own thing. Uh, the trailer, yeah, looks good. Looks shot well. I, I do like the part at the end where he jumps on the bus and all the people bring out their cameras. Like, don't do anything, you're gonna get canceled, which is fucking pretty hilarious. I, fuck uh, that 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 one thing alone. <laughs> I'm like I'm watching this shit. <laughs> that was a very good. Yeah, that, I like that a lot. That was very cool. Uh, so yeah, this is uh yeah uh, this is coming out February. And this is coming out this month, right? Yeah. I yeah. So, so th- th- yeah, this looks this looks cool, man. I'm 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 in. I'm on board. What do you think? Uh, dude, I, I fucking loved it. Uh, the one thing I do see is still they're trying to jack up people's body count. Yeah. In yeah. Voorhees, man. I I, I get it. Yeah. Stakes. Stay in your lane, guys. Leatherface only killed like what one person in that uh, that first movie? Like one or two people killed like two. No, he killed like he killed like whoa, we know he killed like two, I think. Yeah, because the other people, the other part of parts of his family were fucking killing people too. Yeah, uh, so yeah, he, he, I mean, it's it's fun to see a guy wielding a fucking chainsaw running around. I want to see more chainsaw kills. Not axes. I want to see chainsaw kills. He's yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. He's yeah, he, I think he only killed like one person with the chainsaw. Like in so the first. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a yeah. They call it the tech, and he's like known as the guy with the chainsaw, but he only killed like one person with the chainsaw in the first one. You yeah. I'm like, uh, I'm like, uh, I'm like he was Jason never, is known for versatility. Let's yeah. let's get that straight right there. Yeah, know? and he's never my favorite like slasher. Uh, like I love like I appreciate those movies because you know it's it's just what he like Toby Hip- Hooper did with those you know with that first one. And just kind of like the tone he set, uh, just for like that early what seventy four came out. Uh, yes. the uh, so yeah, I appreciate what that what that movie did. Uh, and this is a story by Fede Alvarez. And uh, that's uh, the key for me too, right there, yeah. Fede Alvarez, bro. Yeah, yeah. Go watch that uh, that Evil Dead remake, which I was ready to hate, but I actually really enjoyed. I thought it was great. Yeah, for uh, you know, kind of like another one of those things where you kind of go in like you're gonna remake it, do your own thing, but still have the the heart and soul of the original. So. I, I fucking love that. I still I fucking dig that movie so much. That that's like the main thing uh, when I saw it was like brought to you from uh, the guys who brought you Evil Dead. I was like, oh shit, Fidi Alvarez. All right, 
let's let, let's take a look at this and then you see what he's doing i'm just like yeah exactly this is how i think this is what scream wanted to do uh how you incorporate shit from today uh into into a movie you know like they, they, yeah they're recording we're gonna cancel you bro it's like <laughs> oh dude fuck yeah please kill them this, this is gonna be this is gonna be so fucking so good this generation's not ready to fucking deal and it's funny it's how like they unleash our boogeyman on this generation right and it's funny how their generation can't handle that shit. they they you always get a tommy jarvis a laurie strode now you get uh the 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 chick who survived this one i'm like y'all are so is that the same chick too yeah it's okay. the same girl and when people and i i know people like to throw out there it's like oh well why would you go back to that because of ripley yeah. Ripley. Ripley was just like uh, she was scared. She didn't want to go. She didn't want to go back and face the xenomorphs. But in fucking aliens, she fucking went back and she fucking went ham. And that's therapy. Fucking that's yeah. the best therapy <laughs> in the world, right there. Yeah. Actually, I, you know what? The more I thought about, it, like, I, I'm, I'm a, like, I, I didn't didn't like some of the writing, but I kind of like a lot of the stuff in uh, that new screen. Like, I, I need to rewatch it. There's I, there's there's parts I, I I like, but one thing that pisses me off is a. Uh, Okay, so the the biggest thing, just before you know, it's the house, the it's Stu's house, uh, it, and why would they buy it? Why would they buy the house where a lot of their friends were murdered at? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, uh, it's like, oh, this is derivative of the fucking friend. <laughs> like, I think that was the point. Like, this, this, I, 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 I get that, but it's just like, okay, okay I mean, not, just make a movie, just just make a goddamn movie. Stop being stop being clever. Well, yeah, the whole no, no point of the first scream was but, supposed to be. But clever. it's not. It's not Kevin Williamson clever. It's somebody else trying to be clever. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I kind of. I, 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 I dig Kevin Williamson, man. Like, uh, I, I want to see what Curse would have been with if they didn't cut any shit out. Uh, like, that movie was a mess. Uh, yeah, whatever. that's dude. That's studio interference. Yeah, that movie, I, I was. Yeah, there's a lot of studio interference in that one. Just remember that. You'd be disappointed the fucking it, shit out of I, I'm, I'm totally with you. I still haven't had a good werewolf movie in a long time. Uh, Lori, uh, isn't Texas Chainsaw okay. based on a true story? Um, kind of. It was like oh, based on Ed Gaines. Ed Gaines. Ed Gaines. Yeah, whatever. The, uh, yeah, kind of. Kind of. Like it, it, it. They just said that. That put that in the beginning of the film. Uh, the it's, a, it's, it's about. It, yeah. It's the the it, thing it, about Ed Gaines was the uh, the chopping and making the chili. That's that he yeah, killed people and yeah, made so the chili out of it. That's what a few. Was there was a few movies that are oh, based on a true story that took took the Ed Gaines like story. And, uh, you know, it, it's it's a lot scarier if you put that in the beginning of the film, like based on the true story uh, thing. So uh, another thing about this, too, they, they're bringing John Larroquette back uh, to do the voice or uh, for the beginning, because he's oh, nice. the, he's the one that actually did the vo original voiceover for the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, so, yeah, a little a little trivia for the original Texas Chainsaw. Yeah, just John, yeah. John Larroquette. I love yeah. that guy. Yeah, John Lacat's voice on there. Yeah, yeah, he's having a little resurgence too right now. So I think he came back for one of the uh, the newer movies too. I think he came back uh, for the uh, ones that came out a few years ago too. So has the has the voiceover. So that's that's cool. That's good. See, that's good. Uh, that's good fan service right there, man. You know, there's no reason for it, but you know, uh, what do you think of the look? What do you think of the new uh, the leather? Uh, I, I, it's more accurate. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a lot more accurate. It, it's a fucking face torn off of somebody and just hollowed out. It's, yeah. uh, I to me, it's just I, I want to see what he what, what what the character feels like, like as he terrorizes. Because there's something to Leatherface. Like Leatherface was always like there's something about him that he's off. Like yeah. it's like he's not uh, like a man child. You know, with exactly. a fucking, like you have a. A dude with a fucking mind of a five year old with a chainsaw yeah. and just kind of going running around fucking slaughtering people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean that's I think that's what fucking you know brings such a fucking warming feeling to my heart when I see Jason out there. Like I I, I call him every time. I'm like, dude, this guy, you know, look at look at that fucking aim. He fucking hits people from thirty yards away. You know, when they're running and they're doing the special Olympic fucking gold medal. Gold medal, hey, dude. Not even just Special Olympics. He would have been an Olympic medalist from, from Camp Crystal Lake. <laughs> Haley you know? Otto, dude, was it New Jersey? Yeah, right. It was in Jersey. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, Lake. Camp Crystal Lake, Jersey. Jason Voorhees. Can you imagine him fucking doing the javelin throw? <laughs> they, they have like dummies out there so he can fucking like, throw it at. 
Yeah. That'd be a good man. If we had some money, man, we could do a, do a fucking parody of that shit. Like he just throws the javelin and kills one of the judges. <laughs> <laughs> like you just have him like oh. <laughs> Like when he, like, he's just like running, like everybody's like running, and he's just like walking. <laughs> like he fucking, he just starts stabbing people. But they're running away from him. That's the best part. And you just see him just walking, hella slow after him. Yeah, I think all right. Let's get some money. We'll, we'll make it a little short. <laughs> yeah, no, I, this sucks, good man. Yeah, February eighteenth. So this is a couple weeks away. Yeah, we'll definitely uh, probably, uh, talk about it on the show when it comes out. Oh, uh, uh, it's. Good. I'm probably gonna watch it first night. It's, it's this one's a uh, Netflix, right? That's Netflix, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait. This is gonna yeah. be a, as soon as it comes out. Uh, I'm gonna probably throw this one on. Yeah, I'm gonna throw it. Yeah, throw, throw it on my calendar. Put on my on, on the calendar. My calendar. Get it on the calendar. Uh, Not a calendar. A calendar. Calendar. <laughs> uh, so, other than the first two, what are, any other other ones you recommend? Uh, I do, do recommend. The, the, I recommend the Jessica Biel one. Uh, yeah. That's the Platinum Dunes one, right? That's the Platinum Dunes one. It's it's fast paced. It's a, kind of like a retelling of it. It it's you yeah, know it's not, it's not the greatest. Movies. It's not the greatest, but it's good. Yeah, the, their Jason movie was good too. I actually Jason really was fucking. I, I fucking loved it, man. I I'm telling you, yeah, that first underrated. kill where he fucking just runs up and he looks like I'm like, dude, he is gonna fucking whack the. You just feel like it's like him. Dude. And you feel him moving. Like, oh man, it's yeah. Like before, you don't really feel that. You know, Jason is just coming at you, but this motherfucker is coming with some anger yeah. and hate. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, actually, cool. I yeah, it's definitely one of the better like remake. Uh, better, reboot. better boogeyman. Like, like yeah. you look at Freddy. I think there was potential there. They just fucked up the story. Uh, Leatherface was okay. They they picked up another. You know, a big bulge, bulging guy, Candyman. They, yeah. Uh, it's yeah, it's it's. I mean, the Candyman they use in it. Yeah, I told you, it's it's like fucking. What's his name? Charlie Murphy from fucking the Chappelle Show when he's playing the when he's doing the little fucking head jiggle and shit. Forgot uh, when they do the pimp uh, the pimp ball. Charlie Murphy's little starts fucking jiggling. It's fucking cool. hilarious. That's what Candyman looks like. Uh, no joke. People gonna be like, "Oh, you racist!" I'm like fucking go watch a skit and watch Candyman. It's fucking <laughs> <laughs> candy. Like fuck you, dude. I ain't scared of your shit. Tony, you're not fucking Tony Todd. I ain't fucking scared. Like, Tom, sorry, it's, it's too angry. But yeah, this looks good. <laughs> this looks fun. Yeah, looks good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check it out. Yeah, yeah, I think this is gonna be a, a, one of the better ones for sure. I like it look, the look of it looks good, and it's free on Netflix, which is awesome. I can just watch it. Netflix, yeah. Netflix again, man. I'm telling you, is, is this is a movie or a show? It's a movie, I believe. It's a movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was like, damn. At least if they, if it was a if it was a show, they'd give us the whole thing at once. Yeah, I wish I could see them doing a show, but kind of doing like a prequel too, like kind of doing a prequel, kind of you know, showing what happened, like how you know he came to be and shit. They did that in that origin story thing for was that the one where uh, oh that was the new beginning? No, no, what the fuck? Yeah, was that? I think that was um, that one was Leatherface. The, yeah, that was after uh, the the Dario one, right? Yeah, that's the one where he, like, she's related to him, and parts of it were cool. Parts of it were cool. On the overall, it was just the story was like, what, what? <laughs> it, it just it went very uh, it went very Halloweenish with the uh, like Laurie Strode related to Michael Myers out of nowhere. I was like, all right, this is fucking. So, are you Halloween? Or are you yeah. massacre? I don't know. I don't know, right? I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's see here. All right, so let's uh, let's jump. Uh, well, actually, hold on. I got one chat here. Uh, from the Hondalorian Gung Ho Fat Choi, I'm encouraging everyone to check out Moss. Yeah, that got banned in uh, the schools. Uh, oh, it was, Texas. Was it Texas? Oh, no, oh, no Tennessee. Tennessee, yeah. Backward ass fucking states. Yeah, because yeah, they don't want, you know, they kind of want to bury history. Like, you can't show any images of the, you know, what actually happened and uh, sugarcoat this history so kids won't learn to repeat themselves. But and this is, and I'll tell you guys, this is why you don't give participation trophies away. Yeah. This is why, because now you have a, a bunch of fucking. Oh well, we need to do it like this. Like no, no, no. They need. Wh why do you want to not give them the truth? Why do I, you want to the I'm truth? I grew up the era I did. Like where like people didn't care about the shit we were reading. <laughs> shit we were going through. Like uh, maybe some of the music they uh, they were. Pissed yeah, off. I think yeah. I think it, what's going to happen is a lot of. Uh, there's going to be a, a lot of fucking regression in uh, in philosophical thought and in you know critical thinking because. We were bombarded with that shit early, so you know we, we we had to deal with it, and now everybody's trying to protect everybody. 
Kids don't know anything. You ask them, you ask an 18 year old about shit. Oh, yeah, they'll tell you every fucking TikTok dance to fucking Jackson Mahomes. Put your, no, put your phone down. I'm asking you a question. Do you know who, you know, you know, why, why, what started the Civil War? And, you know, they, they, you know, they, they won't know. They'll, they'll, oh, it was some taxes or some shit. No, no, it's fucking slavery. Like, they try to, like, yeah. like, oh, it's like states, like all that. No, no, it's fucking slavery yeah. stuff. <laughs> Do you know what, the, you know, what part of the outcome was of the, uh, of World War II? Uh, well, uh, the, 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 the bomb? Like, oh, yeah. One little fucking thing, huh? There's so much shit that happened in that fucking war, and people are going to look over it. Like, you know what? It's, it's sad, too, because people are going to forget about the Vietnam War because of how brutal it was. Yeah. You shouldn't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't fucking put your head in the fucking, uh, head in the ground like a fucking stork, fucking idiots, or an ostrich, whatever the fuck bird that is. <laughs> <laughs> and he would know. Uh, also, uh, <laughs> RIP to DC editor Brian Augustine. Yeah, we talked about in the beginning. Uh, yeah, Brian Augustine. Yeah, go check out his, um, uh, he, he did some writing, co writing with, uh, Mark Wade on The Flash towards the end. Go check that out. The Dark Flash storyline right there. He co wrote this one with, uh, Mark Wade. Uh, definitely a, a highlight of uh, the Flash run, the, the Dark Flash storyline. Uh, and uh, Enter the Dragon, bad guy Bob Hall passed away too. Yeah, RIP to Bob Hall. Yeah, man. We were just talking about Enter the Dragon earlier. Uh, Lori, they'll ban Moss, but no, but kids still have access to graphic novels. Yeah, it, it, hopefully. Yeah, like, you know, these people want to, like, hide history and, you know, just kind of sugarcoat this fucking history. Like, yeah. history is real. History is fucked up. You got kids yeah. learning this shit. And it, what better way? Like, Mal, I remember reading some of Mouse as a kid. I wasn't really super into it, but uh, it, I'm glad that it's out there to like show a, a telling of uh, 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 of history that kids can like look at and like understand and not be like bored with. You know, like it's you know the cats were the Nazis, the dogs were uh, with, the dogs were the Italians, I think, and the mouses were the Jews. Yeah, uh, I, I think it's definitely it's 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 a, it's a classic. For, uh, you know, if you it's a comic book class a, a classic, definitely go check it out. And I, I'm glad it's being sold out and people are like buying it and like, yeah, show it, show it to your kids. Like this is, yeah, it, it wasn't, history wasn't pretty, man. History wasn't sugarcoated, you know, like you got to show kids the, the, the dirt and grime of history. So they won't, you know, what, what they always say, uh, history is doomed to repeat itself, you know, if you don't learn from it. So, yeah, well, that's what they don't want to do. They don't want to learn. And that's what happens, you know, when you just put your head in the sand. You're going to well, just. Like, you know, shit about racism. So what, he can grow up to be a racist? Like, no. Like, it's that whole fucking quote from uh, Ferris Bueller, man. Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you're going to miss it. And these kids right now, they're fucking missing it, bro. They're uh, missing Lori or the Massacre Indigenous Tribes. Yeah, they they, they sugarcoat. Like, yeah, they, it, I had to do, like, a lot of my own research. They were doing that back in the day. Like, they, they kind of sugarcoated that. Uh, like, that's why I like going off and doing my own, like, research on history. Because, uh, like, a lot of the history they teach you in school is... Not good. Even when we were kids, they they try to shoot. Like I remember it's, when sugar it's, it's the it. teachers. It's the teachers. teachers. Certain teachers, yeah. certain teachers will fucking teach you the right thing. I had I was thankful enough that I had teachers who brought in fucking speakers that you know were part of the you know Black Panther movement and uh, other movements going on. You know, in the freedom of the, the you know the sixties and the seventies. So well, I, I was thankful for them. That makes sense. Yeah, they would bring them in. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I liked I liked it. It was fun. <laughs> it was fun. And like uh, no, I remember like in school, like uh, they they had like uh, t one teacher had like all the like in elementary school they had all the wars we won, and they had you know we won the uh, Korean War, we won the Vietnam War. Like no, we did not. <laughs> we lost those fucking wars, man. Was, I was like, I saw pl I saw platoon. <laughs> yeah, and, like no, they like they definitely tried to like sugarcoat and re 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 rearrange history, and it takes teachers, man, and that's why it sucks that the teachers are getting paid such shit. Because a lot of these teachers get paid shit, and they're not gonna put these extra effort for these like shit kids. And, like, but if you pay them more and give them like more, you know, benefits and shit, they they would, you know, they would want to teach these kids, man. And and like, there's talk in Oakland trying to close all these schools, and like, no, we need more schools. We mean no, mean more teachers, more well-paid teachers. Like this, is it? We're going, we're going the wrong way with all this fucking shit, man. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just the children of the future. Yeah. yeah, come on, yeah. guys. Uh, Lori, uh, if you haven't seen John Leguizamo's Latin History for Morons, you should. It's so good and better than truth than the, any history books. Yeah, they should record a lot of Latin history, man. Like the the contributions. Like I didn't know. Like for a long time, I didn't know fucking Mexico was fucking <laughs> like own California. Fucking most most of fucking uh the Southwest, bro. 
and they don't mention that a lot of that shit. That's why I like, like I said, I like, I like doing my own like research when I was a kid, just kind of like looking up history and like shit, like the real history of shit. People, so. people tend to believe that they won at the fucking Alamo. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, you guys know, like the Alamo is one of those things. Like, no, no, they got fucking slaughtered. They got fucked up. Yeah. Remember the Alamo? Remember the Alamo? Yeah. Cause he got fucked up at the Alamo. That's why. That's why. They got fucked up. The hubris of the fucking Mexican army at the time, that was the part, you know? The fucking stupid ass Santa Ana. You stupid fucker. <laughs> you know, one fucking false ass movie, fucking Napoleon, the whole fucking shit. You custard it. You fucking. You see? They won't know who the fuck Custer is. They won't know who Napoleon is. Go watch Bill and Ted's, you stupid dicks. Sorry. All right, so we're going to transition to our pull list this week. Uh, pull list is the stuff you picked up, uh, bought, listened to, watched. Uh, something you want to complain about. Something pissed you off this week. Uh, Rick, you want me to start or you want to start? You can start. I was pissed already. <laughs> <laughs> Not too many things. I was, well, there's a couple of things I was pissed off. Uh, but, um, yeah, no, um, I've been watching uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, the podcast. Uh, the three guys are uh, going back and watching the first episode and kind of like every episode is them talk, kind of talking about. A lot of times with them, they just kind of go off on these like tangents, but it's actually really fun and really good podcast. If you're a fan of the show, even if you're not a fan of the show, it's just three guys uh, talking shit to each other and just kind of shooting the shit. And it's just those three? Yeah, it's just those three like in a room, just kind of like reminiscing about the, the episode. Like uh, they're going through all... all Every episode, one by one, and the episodes are like thirty minutes long. Uh, they just uh, they're up to like episode sixteen or so. I just started watching them, and like I, I watched the newer one, and then I went back and started watching from the beginning. Uh, they're really fun, man. They're fucking hilarious. They, they just got good fucking chemistry. And it's fun to hear some of the stories that some of the uh, the shows that like how they came about and stuff. So it's interesting. It's definitely a fun ride. So de definitely check it out if you're a fan of uh, It's Always Sunny. Uh, definitely fun to see like the insight and kind of them kind of shoot the shit and just kind of fuck with each other. And uh, they fuck with each other hard too. It's just hilarious. Like, <laughs> so it's a, uh, it's, it's fun to check out. Uh, definitely check that out. Um, uh, I picked up uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. Uh, watch it last night. Uh, actually, uh, I love ordering stuff on Best Buy. If you're still in the, you know, you still buy disc and stuff, I would recommend going to Best Buy and pre-ordering stuff because a lot of their stuff comes out ahead of time. Like I got this on Saturday; it comes out today. Uh, oh, so, nice. Yeah, so it's cool. They, it, shit comes out early. Uh, great. Uh, yeah, I got the 4K release. Uh, fun movie, man. This is the third time I've seen it. Uh, I, I love this movie so much, man. It's just well made and. Uh, uh, just the effects and the cast and everything. Uh, some decent special features, a lot of uh, behind the scenes and kind of making of. You kind of see uh, Jason Reitman in the uh, behind the scenes. Uh, you get to see uh, uh, some interviews with the cast and you get to see the uh, when the, the original Ghostbusters uh, spoilers. Uh, it's all over the marketing campaign, so it's not really a cat's out of the bag on that one. Uh, but uh, yeah, some cool, cool shit. Um, uh, yeah, uh, some co Easter egg uh, video. Uh, some Easter eggs I didn't like. I, I watched a lot of Easter egg videos for uh, this movie, and like there was shit I missed. Uh, like they missed too. So uh, some like you know, certain signs and stuff on walls and stuff. Like oh shit, that's that's awesome. So uh, yeah, cool, cool. Some cool documentaries. Some like good interviews with the old original cast and some of the new cast. Uh, dug it a lot. Uh, picked up uh, last uh, night in Soho. This came in today. Uh, can't wait till I'm gonna watch as soon as we're done here. I'm, Take some edibles and watch this. I'm very excited. I love Edgar Wright, and uh, definitely talk about it next week once I once I watch it. Uh, you loved it. What's up? I fucking loved it. Yeah, yeah, I'm That's excited. Great. I'm I can't wait to see it, man. Yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, I'm almost done with uh, my epic collection, the Tom Vic, uh, DeFalco and um, Paul Ryan uh, doing the '90s Fantastic Four run. Uh, such a great epic collection, man. I love these stories, man. Tom DeFalco is underrated. Um, underrated uh, uh, writer. And this ties into the Infinity War. Uh, if you remember that uh, series, it was a se sequel series to Infinity Gauntlet uh, where uh, the heroes fought a bunch of like doppelgangers of themselves. Uh, some great stuff, man, in there. Yeah, really fun story. And uh, Sue gets her, her hot, cheesy 90s out outfit right there, which is awesome. Oh, that was the glitter cover, right? Uh, I was like, yeah, it was like a- like a, For the single? Yeah, it was like a-, like a Hologram? Yeah, it's like a hologramic kind of. What was it, what was it called? Um, prism. Yeah, prism. There you go. Prism like cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that's. I think that was three seventy-five. Uh, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I, think, that, I think I got that somewhere. 
Yeah, it's a great issue. I love that issue. Yeah, I love that costume too. Uh, and also, uh, I was going to save this for my hidden gem, but I'll have another one. Uh, my Godzilla Hanna Barbera uh, came in. Uh, this is based off the Hanna Barbera cartoon from the seventies. Uh, the Godzilla. Uh, this is uh, uh, from Mondo. The Mondo uh, uh, vinyl. Uh, the, the just came out. Little high end premium format statue. Uh, so this is awesome. Uh, I love the original uh, Godzilla cartoon, the Hanna Barbera one. So yeah, all I need is a Godzuki. Uh, once I get a Godzuki, oh, my life will be uh, complete. But this is a uh, yeah, this is an awesome uh, figure. Cool little. It comes with a little cool little stand. Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, a little pr a little pricey, but I pre this came early too, which is awesome. Uh, I didn't expect this until like mid year, uh, so it came in. Uh, yeah, cool looking figure. If you're a fan of, uh, if you know this uh, original Godzilla, I think Hondo will uh, geek out a little bit on this one too. Uh, but yeah, this is a cool little figure, man. Cool little vinyl figure. Uh, definitely ha happy to have that in my collection. Uh, and yeah, I'm trying to think what else. I had something else, but I can't remember. But uh. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lori, there's no basement at the Alamo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they would have hit. They would have hit their asses there if there was. <laughs> <laughs> Great Pee Wee reference. Uh, Big Leo, my uh, my pool list. Ozark is back. I knew. Oh, I can't wait to. See. Yeah, Ozark's great, man. Uh, well, I don't know. You've you've never seen Breaking Bad, have you? Uh, I've seen the first six episodes of Breaking Bad. Okay. Yeah, it's similar to Breaking Bad, but in a different way. Yeah, that's what I hear. Yeah. Yeah, heard, yeah another one of those shows that. Everyone said it's fucking amazing. I need to watch. It's really, it's really good, man. Someday, but I haven't got to it yet. So, yeah. So I'll, I'll get to it someday, man. It's too much TV, man. Too much TV out there. Uh, uh, what you got, Rick? Uh, so I just started playing on Nintendo Switch. Uh, uh Pokemon Ar Arceus, the the new Pokemon game. Kind of yeah, looks. Like, yeah. It's kind of looks like Legend of Zelda. The the one thing is, it's a. Uh, it's, it's still the beginning of the game for me, so it's I'm still learning a, a lot of the mechanics. Uh, I wish there wasn't so much, uh, you know, press button to kind of get them to keep talking because there's a lot of that. Uh, other than that, it's pretty much the Pokemon game. You know, people want to play. You walking around in a in the world and ca ca catching them, collecting them, fighting them, uh, seeing which one's the best, evolving them. You know, just. Into, until you progress further in the game, you, you do try to, uh, they give you catch this many, you know, and you'll get rewards to kind of fill out. It's pretty much a grinding game, <clears throat> kind of like Warcraft uh, Warcraft questing. Mm. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's a pure grind. So far, it's cool. I really enjoy it. Caught like a, you know, a few 20 different Pokemon. But like I said, still, I'm still in the beginning section. So I, I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, progressing in the game. I already got fucking my ass handed to me by... <laughs> and big ass fucking fiery horse and shit chase so me down you basically go around collecting pokemon and then you fight the pokemon or what yeah so you you just look at the pokemon in your in, in your uh in your inventory kind of select the best stat ones move those into your fighting positions or whatever uh because it wants you to fight the pokemons you, you either have the choice of fighting them or just catching them just continually catching them uh to kind of you know look for the the pokemon and with the best stats. power up your guys and like exactly get them. yeah it's not something fun yeah, it's it, it's cool, you know. It does look the kid. It looks very kiddy, because you know it's Pokemon. It's supposed to be one of these Nintendo family games, but fun is fun. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I love Mario games as much as I love like a Metroid game. So yeah, fun is fun. Nintendo makes great games, and I'm just it, I'm enjoying it so far. Did you uh, see uh, there was a first person shooter that uh, Nintendo? Yeah, they got super fucking pissed about it. <laughs> <laughs> you just go around with shotguns and shit and blasting Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's fine, man. It's just like people can do what the fuck they want, man. It's just don't don't get hella butthurt about it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, some people it's just just I don't want children to see that. Well, maybe it's not a children's game, right? That's why they can't fucking play it. You know, some people want to kill Pokemon, some people want to catch them. You know, got to catch them all, got to kill them all. It's it's a, it's a choice, folks. It's a choice. Uh, let me see. Second thing was uh got two series one of them's a cartoon on amazon prime called the legend of vox machina uh for somebody like myself who played you know uh you know dungeons and dragons and then you know graduated to warcraft all the way to, up to warcraft it's pretty much warcraft meets adult swim it's <laughs> i don't want to say it's like the meet the feebles uh it's not that fucking you know gross and <laughs> It's fucking far out, 
but it's it's pretty it's pretty pretty sick dude it's uh it's adult swim this thing could have belonged on on hbo uh it's weird that they did show like full frontal at one point not full frontal but top uh when the little fucking uh little gnome he's the bard and he's like banging like a fucking elf like an elf uh uh tavern wench which it's fucking crazy this they <laughs> fight dragons so it's like a it's just ragtag mercenary group uh it's kind of anime the the style's like a weird kind of anime it, it the show's fucking nuts the show is nuts dude it's uh clever writing uh so if you're like uh a D, &D person or have played warcraft or have uh just or into fantasy stuff and like watch want the genre just like flipped upside down this is a fucking show man they have and no, it's on amazon prime oh okay i gotta check it out Sounds yeah fun. Yeah, it's it's fucking super fun. Uh, the 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 thing is, there's nobody of note when it comes to like the voice casting. Everybody is like a voice actor, which is kind of refreshing in a way. I think the only person I recognize uh, was what's her name, Ashley Johnson. Uh, she played uh, was it Chrissy on Growing Pains, the little girl. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So she does like the voice of the of their healing uh, of their healing. Uh, yeah, I think she does a lot of voice act, acting work too. Yeah, she's like that's her gig now. Yeah, so yeah, the guys, the, the a company makes it. I think they're called Critical Role. They're the writers of it. They're, they're it's oh, yeah. fucking hilarious, man. Yeah, it's a pretty big company. Yeah, Critical Role. So yeah, that's that's pretty fucking good. Uh, so yeah, Legend of Vox Machina on Amazon Prime. Other one is also on Amazon Prime. I just started that show, uh, The Wheel of Time, uh, with Rosamund Pike. Uh, a little slow at first, but dude, it's uh, it got really good really fast, like in episode uh, four. I always give things like you know a chance. I'm like, all right, it's started drawing me in slowly, but it's not like fucking like Game of Thrones where bam, it's like oh, Ned Stark's gone. What the fuck? Like it's not like that level, but things are happening. You know, machinations. You know, people making Machiavellian fucking plots and everything. Uh, so it's pretty dope uh rosamund pike's fucking great i don't think there's other than her uh i'm not sure if there's anybody like big in this uh yeah it's uh it's pretty dope just the storyline she's uh she plays something called an acid uh she's like a channeler and usually only women have this power they have a person who protects them and the way they describe their bond, it's fucking stronger than, you know, husband, wife, stronger than parent, child, stronger than any bond that you could ever think about. Pretty much, it, they can feel what each other's feeling. It's like, so if she feels danger, like her ward can fucking, you know, run to her and like, you know, protect her or whatever they need to do, you know, fight whatever fucking uh, thing. So it's pretty dope. Like, I, I like the world that they're creating so far. It's so, yeah, it's called the Wheel of Time on... Uh, uh amazon prime good thing is the whole the whole series is already out fox machina they only have the first three uh first three episodes they premiere every friday mm, okay. cool yeah. awesome yeah yeah i like when they do that like yeah put, put that at least get like if you're not gonna release every episode every week at least give me like a good chunk like peacemaker like peacemaker came out with the fucking good low chunk yeah, yeah. What's the, oh tonight the uh, Boba Fett tonight, uh, tonight yeah. Boba Fett yeah or two more episodes of Boba Fett and yeah I'm 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 excited I'm liking I'm liking the Boba Fett man I just I didn't like that last episode because I was just like all right cool uh, I want to see more Boba Fett uh, yeah. that could that yeah. could have been a standalone uh, episode yeah, yeah, for your yeah. appetite you know, it did tie in at the end it's like uh, like save that for the Mandalorian show I'm gonna watch yes exactly. Yeah. But it was a cool, good, great episode of Mandalorian. <laughs> it, it was. It was a great. It was a fucking awesome episode yeah, of Mandalorian. Look at their ship. The ship is fucking badass. Yeah. Oh, it, it it's it's what's his name? Ship, right? No. No. Okay. It's yeah. Not. No. 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 It's it, they they looked at the writing on the sides. It's it's different writing. Okay. So. Everybody's trying to make the connection. Well, that's a ship, man. I'm like same uh, model. It's the same model. It's just not yeah. the same. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's in cool. the it's in the Boo Starfighter. Right? Not everything needs a fucking tie in together. Yeah. Like, but it's it's enough where it's it's cool. Yeah. All right, uh, all right. Let's jump into our hidden gem. Hidden gem uh, stuff you picked up. Uh, uh, you know, something uh, special to your collection. Something personal you want to talk about. Uh, so my hidden gem. I didn't get to talk about this last last week because uh, I was sick. Uh, but uh, uh, we, we lost we lost one of our soldiers last week. Uh, I thought I had it here. Where the fuck is it? I, I took it down. 
Oh, you took it down. Oh, man, I was going to post it, man. You dick. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, so Phil D, man, uh, uh, going to miss miss uh, my little cat cat cousin. Uh, my, you know, I have my, my cat Carmelo. They're like uh, you know brothers from another, another another litter. So, you know, I didn't get to say goodbye to the guy, uh, but he was definitely – big part of our show and big part of our family. So definitely, uh, that's my hidden gem for this week. But Mr. Fieldy, I'm going to be miss you. And uh, I'm going to miss those little screams uh, coming uh, <laughs> coming out from the side. We got to get like a soundboard. So we can <laughs> just have them interrupt. The show. Uh, I, I want to, I'm going to actually go through all hundred and well, no, it's not 114, probably about like 80 shows. And I'm going to get all his, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna get all his. I'm gonna try to time all his greatest hits. Yeah, no, he had some good ones, man. He had some good fucking interaction. He had his. his it's he's probably the best. Uh, the best comedic timing. He, he's. I mean, <laughs> we, we talk. We you know we bring Alex on all the time, but I think Fieldy had the probably second most appearances uh, <laughs> next to me and you. You know, so. Um, yeah, no, he's a, yeah, he's definitely a big part of the show, and yeah, it's definitely gonna. Gonna feel the loss, and I, not and having him interrupt the show is gonna be surely gonna be missed. So I didn't get to say that last week. So yeah. he's, my, he's my hidden gem this week. So yeah, yeah. yeah. he was he, he was he was my fucking lap cat during the show, and uh, it was sick because I did feel like fucking Doctor Claw with him all the time. <laughs> yes, gadget, I'm gonna get you. Um, you know, but you know, he's not gonna be. He's never gonna be forgotten, man. Yeah, he's a, he's a, we, we need to, we're gonna start our Hall of Fame. He's gonna be the first member yeah. of the uh, yeah. Book Hall of Fame. Fieldy, first, first one in. Yeah, first one in. Fieldy's uh, we're calling now Hall of Fame SF Kyle Bucko. Fieldy's number one, number one in the Hall of Fame. Uh, we should do that. We should do that. Yeah, we do we do a Hall of Fame for the uh, SF Kyle Bucko. first entrant. Uh, Ray, did you finish the Golden Girls binge watch? Uh, no, I'm on episode ten of the second season. So yeah, I'm still I'm still chugging along, still fucking hilarious. I'm gonna, I, and they posted on Hulu too. They got gold. I forgot about that. They had a spinoff show, Golden Palace. I totally forgot. Oh about yeah, that. I forgot about that one. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. It's just where it's not. Oh, after uh, after B. Arthur passed, right? No, she left. Did she leave? Yeah, she left. Yeah, yeah. She didn't want to come back for another season, so they just did a spinoff, The Golden Palace, where they like ran like a fucking hotel or some shit. It was weird. Yeah. Uh, uh, any predictions uh, about the last two Boba Fett episodes from Lori? Uh, I heard some rumors about uh, certain characters coming in, so I don't want to spoil that for folks, but it uh, should be pretty interesting. Uh, the last two episodes, the last episode uh, apparently is uh, yeah, some major shit goes down. Uh, so this is all building to, uh, we're going to have the Ahsoka series too. I think it's going to kind of happen during this time also. And uh, they did announce a movie for 2025, an unannounced Star Wars movie. So I think this is what it's all leading up to, like uh, Mandalorian, Boba Fett, and uh, Ahsoka. Uh, we might have some Grand Admiral Thrawn and all that shit. I think it's all building up to like a big Avengers Endgame type movie, which sounds awesome, man. I'm ready for this, man. Like a big team up movie with all those, like all those cats, man. Have fucking uh, Ahsoka and fucking Boba Fett, and Mando, and fucking uh, Ezra. Kind of like tie up all this shit from Clone Wars and Rebels. And uh, you know, Bad Batch, and kind of like this, like epic, like fucking. This is a combination of all these like storylines that you know, all these uh, uh, side stories. So uh, I'm excited. I'm I'm here for it, man. This is this is fun. This is uh, you know, uh, say what you will about the the sequels. I watched Force Awakens the other night, and it just pisses me off because potential. It, it just set up is so great for all these great storylines, and the second one just fucking kills it. And then the third one is all over the place because they're trying to make up for all the other shit. Uh, it's it's a fucking mess. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> David Souter, damn Niners need to get rid of Jimmy G. Ah, uh, yeah, he's gone. He's uh, done. He's gone. He uh, his press conference today. He's pretty much that's a goodbye press conference. Yeah, yeah, he's done. He's done. Okay. That's okay. fine. Hey, you know, I love. J- I still love Jimmy G. Uh, I'll be a fan of him wherever he goes, man. He he yeah, he, uh, from- he injected life into the franchise. Yeah, and he was. Uh, you know, he he got us. You know, he he was a big part of getting us to where we're at, and. Uh, just he just didn't get us past that hump. So you know, uh, I I still respect Jimmy G, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah, less less said about that the better. But yeah, that that conference press conference day was pretty much a goodbye. Thanks to fans, and uh, it was a hell of four years. And uh, you know, hey man, it's uh, you know good good luck to him wherever he goes. But you know, hopefully this trade kid fucking works out because if he doesn't, we're fucked. <laughs> All these motherfuckers calling for a trade to come in. This, this guy better pan out because you you pretty much banked our future on him. So, uh, David again uh, and love Bubba Fett. Yeah, I love Bubba Fett. Yeah, I could understand some of the criticism, like the little Scooter Gang and shit like that. I get that, but 
it's still a great show. I love seeing Boba Fett with a story and fucking. Uh, 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 they want to hit on the Scooter Gang, but I mean that was like a fucking that was like a little thank you to fucking George Lucas. Yeah. How the yeah. fuck can you hate on that? You yeah. fucking weak ass, fake ass fucking yeah. Star Wars fans. It's like, dude. I, didn't, I like. I just didn't like the look of them. I, I like. I no, like it's it. It, it's American graffiti, bro. It's not Tatooine. That's not a look of ta- a kid. Like that's exactly. A look of they're they're kids. That's the whole thing. They're trying to change all, shit. All they had to do was put one line in there. Oh, we're from Coruscant, or we're from like some fucking like that little ring planet Mando was on, or something. Like you could make like make them from another. Yeah, that's I agree. Some of them should have been from there, but I think the leader <laughs> should have been from somewhere else. Like I'm from Coruscant. I'm off from here. Yeah, yeah, we're all from we're from Coruscant. Yeah, uh, you know, it's just something like that. Like one little line I think would have saved that. Uh, you know, hey, hey, and the motherfuckers don't like it. Don't watch it. Like don't watch it. I'm I'm gonna enjoy watching it. I'm gonna enjoy fucking watching this shit. Thank you, John Favreau. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, Rick, what's your hidden gem? Uh, hidden gem? This is something I got a while back. Almost six, about five weeks. Another NECA that I got. And let me see. I'll, I'll get that image right there. It's the fri- – I love Sackhead. I know people don't like them <laughs> uh, because it's not It's not, It's not. not the uh, Friday the 13th that they're used to. That's uh, not my Jason. Yeah, fuck you guys. <laughs> You know, that's that, that's I know there are people who fucking hate on them. Uh, I'm a big I fucking do love part two. The part two has some very, very big iconic uh, yeah, scenes and scenery. And Sackhead Jason is a whole part of that whole thing. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Krista, for that one. Uh, yeah, you know, my, my Kessler Wolf just shipped. So oh, nice. Yeah. So I should be getting that this week. I'm fucking yeah, see, nobody hates on anybody else. And, you know, because that's the top werewolf and shit. But I have to fucking always defend, you know, Sackhead Jason because, you know, it's like, dude, it's like, that's my version of Little Big Planet Jason right there. <laughs> like, can you imagine if you could make a Little Big Planet Jason? Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Walk around sack, with the sack it to me, man. Sack it to me. Uh, uh, another fun one, Rick. Yeah. It, yeah, was, it, it was super fun, man. Yeah, we thanks did. for holding it down last week. Uh, yeah. No problem. Deal with this fucking shit. Hopefully, uh, yeah, uh, uh, it's just fucked up out there, guys. Still fucking be safe out there and wear your shit, man. Any uh, final words for us, uh, Mr. Uh, Effort? Yeah, don't don't buy the high people. I know that it's uh, people saying that it's okay to go back to the gym and not mask up. From what I've been seeing, everything's hit close to home for me. I know a lot of people who it's affected. Uh, people in my circle. Multiple people, which sucks. I'm just thankful that everybody is okay because we're vaccinated. And it's not about your vaccination is not going to help you not get it. It's going to keep you alive. That's the key. Yeah. You know? I didn't die. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. I mean, you you felt you you feel like shit, but you know, like like I told people, like I had a, a little bit of a sore throat on Friday for you know because I was screaming, and uh, next thing I know, like. I have, uh, I, I thought I had a sore throat. So, you know, I. Any, any little, like, like, is it. Yeah, gets in your head. It, yeah. Gets in your uh, head. Yeah. But, you know, it's, uh, you know, keep, te- you know, checking on yourself and, you know, keep Take your checking. precautions, folks. Yeah. Mask up. Yeah. Uh, Lori, feel better, Ray. Thank you, Lori. Happy t- uh, Taco Tuesday. I'm not a taco in a long time. I need taco. I'm going to make spaghetti. So, spaghetti Tuesday. Mom, spaghetti. Um, Cool. Yeah. Thanks to everyone that uh, uh, chipped in and uh, uh, commented and uh, enjoyed our little uh, weekly rant of our geekdom. And mm-hmm. uh, we should be uh, regular schedule next week. Yeah, well, regular schedule next week. Next week, I mean, uh, barring any injury. Uh, hopefully, uh, uh, we should have some interesting stuff to talk about. Maybe we'll do a top top uh, a top five list next week. We haven't done one of those in a while. Okay. Uh, all right, uh, all right, we're going to get out of here. Uh, like, subscribe to the channel. Like the video. It helps with the algorithm. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Turn on the notification bell so you know when we jump on. Sometimes we are, you know, back and forth on some weeks. In a couple weeks I probably need to uh, – Rick is going to have to take over for a couple weeks because i got to work, 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 work. A bunch of work happening. Uh, and if you're going to East Bay Comic Con on Sunday, uh, look for me. Uh, look for me, hopefully, and um, the Honda Lauren will be out there. Uh, geeking it up with you guys, so uh, come check it. Uh, check out, yeah, come check out the convention. A lot of cool artists. Arthur, uh, Arthur Adams is gonna be there. Uh, fucking Pugsley from uh, Adams Family is gonna be there. 
Uh, they got yeah, some good artists and stuff. Go check them out. Yeah, uh, look for me and uh, the Hondalorian out there. Uh, we'll be out there having some uh, geek fun. I, I definitely need a con really bad. Uh, I'm feeding for one right now, so uh, hopefully I can make it and uh, geek out with some folks. Uh, all right. Uh, see you guys next time. Everyone be safe. Wear those masks and uh, get vaccinated, get boosted, do all that crap, please. And we'll see you guys next time.